fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. Well, Pronto, ever been to a picnic before? Mm, at Little Bighorn. That was no picnic. Maybe not for cavalry. Why, it's the Lone Stranger and Pronto. Hello, ma'am. Hello. Uh. Uh. Can I get you boys some Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger buns? Much obliged, ma'am. Here you are. Uh, how come there's no hot dog or hamburger in these buns? Maybe they're vegetarians. Why, goodness gracious, no. We just love the baked while you sleep fresh taste so much. We never put anything in our Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Well, they're very delicious. Thank you, and goodbye, ma'am. Oh, my. He handed me a silver bullet. Me take that. Indian giver. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. I owe Marita. Away! Faithful Indian companion Toto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you Silver? When the morning stage from the east arrived at Stockton, the usual crowd of curious onlookers were at the stage stop to watch. One of them, a man named Bart Lackey, showed unusual interest in a youthful couple who stepped from the coach. Careful, Ruth. Hal, we're here at lunch. We might as well find out where Mr. Logan's office is and go there right now. Well, mister, if you're looking for Jeff Logan's office, it's right across the street next to the bank. Oh, thanks. Hal and Ruth Creston walked to Lawyer Logan's office. They stood a moment outside. Then Hal spoke. Well, honey, this is it. We'll soon find out how rich we are. <laughs> Let's go in. I'm too excited to think, Hal. Come on. Well, good morning. Good morning, Mr. Logan. We're the Crestons from Kansas City. Huh? We just arrived in town. The, the Crestons? Then you didn't receive my last letter. You mean you sent a second letter, Mr. Logan? Uh, yes. Uh, do sit down. You seem surprised to see us. Thank you. We left soon after your letter came. The one telling about Hal's inheritance. I see. That's why you didn't get the second letter. Well, is there something wrong? Didn't Hal's uncle leave him anything after all? Oh, yes. Yes, he left what was thought to be a paying mine over in Stone Ridge. But... Uh, but what? Well, I might as well give it to you straight from the shoulder. In my first letter, I told you you'd inherited the Ridge Mine, and that it might be worth considerable. That's right. Well, that was two months ago. Since then, I learned from your uncle's former foreman, a man named Bart Lackey, that the mine has given out. Oh, golly, I I was... had Lackey take me over to inspect it, Christian. It's a dead mine. Of course, I expect you to go look for yourselves. Yes, we'll do that. But in your letter, you said Uncle Jed left a roomy cabin and some land. Yes, and your letter spoke of other buildings. Yes, that's right. There's a large cabin and land and also a small frame hotel your uncle owned. Well, after all, Hal, even without the mine... Now, hold on, ma'am. You see, when news got out that the Ridge Mine gave out, others who had gone there to work claims gave up and left. Oh. 
The land is poor and rocky. In other words, Stone Ridge is a ghost town now. What are we going to do? By golly, we came here to settle in Stone Ridge, and that's what we'll do. We'll leave for Stone Ridge this afternoon. A short time later at the cafe, a rough-looking man approached another and spoke in a low voice. Hey, Jake, I got a message for you. Yeah, what? Bart says he saw the Crescens arrive in town and go to the lawyer's office. He found out they're going to Stone Ridge, even though it is a ghost town. Well, what's Bart figuring on doing about it? He says for you to wait along the trail and see that they don't go there. You mean plug them from ambush? Ah, oh, no, that caused trouble. Just scare them enough so they'll turn back, that's all. All right. What are you and Bart going to do? We're heading for Stone Ridge. We'll wait there for you. Right. I'll see you later. And be sure those Crestons don't go to Stone Ridge, Jake. It'll mean trouble if they do. So long. Adios. That afternoon, the Lone Ranger and his Indian companion, Tonto, stopped on a ridge overlooking a valley trail. <laughs> oh, Look like buckboard going along Valley Trail. Yes. Someone shoot a buckboard from ambush. The horses are running wild. Monsieur! Monsieur! Cutting down the slope at a gallop, the masked man and Indian rode to intercept the runaways. As they approached, Tonto called out, Power! Drop rain! Those horses must be stopped! Monsieur! Monsieur! Moving in a little ahead of the racing team, the Lone Ranger and Tonto swung around and moved in on either side. As Silver moved in beside the frenzy team, the Lone Ranger reached out to grab one bridle, while Tonto grabbed the bridle of the other horse. Hold, 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 hold. Hold. Easy there, steady. Hold. Easy, 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 Scott. Easy, Scott. I'll untangle the reins. There. We, we might have been killed. We, you're masked, but, but you saved us. Huh? We owe you and the Indian our thanks, mister. Someone shot at us. I think a bullet singed one of the horses. I I lost the reins. I'm not used to driving a team. Well, you had a narrow escape. We heard the shots. Do you know of anyone who might try to ambush you? No. We arrived from the east only this morning. We're heading for Stone Ridge. Stone Ridge? That ghost town now. Yes, it is. But we were going there to live. I don't understand. Briefly, Hal Creston told the Lone Ranger and Tonto the details. In spite of the mask... Hal felt that they could trust the Lone Ranger since he had saved their lives. When he'd finished his story, the Lone Ranger spoke. Mm, that's interesting. Somebody must have a reason for keeping you away from Stone Ridge. Ah. Do you think the lawyer, Mr. Logan... I've heard of Jeff Logan. He has a reputation as a very honest lawyer. If he had any reason for not wanting you at Stone Ridge, he wouldn't have sent for you in the first place. Of course, I never thought of that. You turn back to Stockton now, maybe? No. We're going on as we planned. Thanks once more for helping us, mister. I hope we'll meet you and the Indian again. I'm sure you will. Goodbye and good luck. Goodbye. Goodbye. Adios. Get up. Come. Oh, nice young couple. Yes. I still think that ambush was planned for them, Toto. Let's investigate the gully back there. I think that's where the shots came from. Ah, easy, steady, big fella. Easy, fella. Oh, oh. Riding into the gully, the Lone Ranger and Tonto searched until they found the tracks of one horse. They followed the trail, which led away from the direction of town for some distance. Finally, after losing the trail in a shallow stream, they pulled to a halt. Oh, 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 oh. Man is clever, Tonto. He's covered his trail well. Ah. We search some more, maybe? No, we've looked long enough. I've noticed that the trail headed in the general direction of Stone Ridge. That's right. Stone Ridge is about eight miles from Stockton, about four miles from here. Uh-huh. We'll go on to Stone Ridge and make camp on the outskirts, and we'll do some investigating. Miss Hillary! Later, in the deserted hotel at Stone Ridge... A rough-looking man entered one of the upper rooms. Ah, hi, Jake. How'd you make out? Do what I told you to do. Yeah, but somebody interfered, Bart. I came right here alone. You, you mean it didn't work, Jake? No, wait, Joe. Let me talk. Didn't the horses bolt like we expected they would, Jake? Sure they did. 
Those two tender feet were clinging to the buckboard for dear life, but like I said, somebody interfered. Oh, you fool. Why did you let anyone interfere? A mess, Tom Brady, an engine came riding down the slope. When I saw that they stopped the runaways, I left in a hurry and covered my trail in case they went snooping. A mess, Tom Brady, an Indian. What kind of story are you trying to cook up? Shut up, Joe. Do you know what you're talking about? Otherwise, you'd have heard of the masked hombre and Indian who helped the law. And if that masked man and Indian come snooping, they'll die. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. A cloud of dust, a flash of light, and a hearty Hayo Morita. The Lone Stranger eats again. Stranger, me got riddle. If you lose, you give me Marita. Okay, then I want to play Pachisi. Hmm. Why is Lone Stranger like Marita, old-fashioned and rich white bread? I give up, Pronto. Why am I like Marita, old-fashioned and rich white bread? Because Marita, old-fashioned and rich white bread, freshest bread in South, and Lone Stranger, fastest draw in West. Hey, that's good. There are more. Why is Lone Stranger not like Marita, old-fashioned and rich white bread? I give up. Because Marita, old-fashioned and rich white bread, very, very soft. And Lone Stranger, very, very tough. Now, give me Marita. Sorry, Pronto. I just ate the last slice. Goodbye. Mm, that bad way to treat Pronto, but good way to end commercial. Tune in again for those thrilling days of yesteryear. The Lone Stranger Eats Again. Hi, old Marita. Away! Now to continue. It was sundown when the Crestons pulled to a stop in front of the cabin to which the lawyer had directed them. Who? Oh, who oh there? Who? Oh. Well, Ruth, here's our future home. Who knows? Someday we may be the leading citizens of Stone Ridge. <laughs> Let's get busy. It was about that time that the Lone Ranger and Toto pitched camp in a grove on a hill that overlooked the town. As darkness fell, they noticed the light in the cabin occupied by the Crestons. Well, Toto, the Crestons have moved into their cabin. Ah. But I just saw another light, Toto, in that building beyond the cabin. As if someone passed a window with a candle. I may not see that. Look, there it is again. Oh, let me see it then. It's high up from ground. The hotel is the only building with a second story. We ride closer and go on foot to investigate easy. Easy, Scout. Come on, Silver. Silver. Get him up, Scout. In the cabin, Ruth and Hal had temporarily cleaned the place. The flickering light from the single lamp on the table cast weird shadows around the large front room, and Ruth shivered whenever she glanced at the bleak, uncurtained windows. Hal, I just thought, what do we do about water? There must be a well around here. Well, in fact, I remember Mr. Logan saying there was a well behind the cabin. I'll go get some water. Hal, do you think it's safe to go out there in the dark? Of course. Hal walked around the cabin to the back and peered through the darkness to locate the well. Oh, I think I see it right back there. As Hal slowly approached the outline of the covered well, a figure moved out from behind a tree. Then a blow crashed down upon the back of his head. <laughs> He'll sure wonder what hit him when he wakes up. Now I better get back to the others. I'll head for the main entrance of the mine. The Lone Ranger and Tonto reached the back of the hotel on foot after leaving the horses among the nearby trees. Hal, where are you? That woman at cabin called. I'll go over and find out what's happened. And me wait here. Maybe find out something. All right, I'll come back shortly. Ruth Creston had waited for Hal to come in with the water. When almost ten minutes went by, she became alarmed and had gone to the door to call him. I must find him. Hal! Hal! Hal, what's happened? Speak to me. Mrs. Preston, what's wrong? Oh. Please don't be frightened. Oh, I wonder how this happened. The masked man? You didn't do it. No, of course not. Todd and I are here to help you. Hal, he, he came out for water. Oh, we can't stay here. We just can't. He'll soon be all right. I'll get him into the cabin. You lead the way with the lamp. After the Lone Ranger left him at the hotel, Toto moved cautiously in the dark, peering in windows and watching for an indication that someone was there. 
Suddenly, as he put his face close to look inside another window, a voice spoke in a low tone and a gun touched his back. Freeze, Indian. Huh? Be quiet. Oh. I'll take your gun. Now walk ahead of me to the back door. Get going or believe me, I'll put a bullet in you. It was just a few moments later that the Lone Ranger reached the back of the hotel to meet Toto. Toto. Hey, maybe he went inside. But I'd see some light. The Lone Ranger walked slowly along toward the back door. A moon had come over the horizon and he could see fairly well outside. Suddenly, he stopped and reached down and picked up something from the doorstep. What's this? A feather. A single eagle feather. For a moment, the masked man held the feather in his hand, looking at it. He realized that Toto must have purposely dropped it from his headband as an indication of trouble. Something's happened to Toto. He must have dropped this here to show he was taken inside. I'll find him if I have to rip the place apart. The Lone Ranger went from room to room, but without result. Systematically opening every door he found, he finally entered the cellar. That, too, was empty. He returned to the main floor and went out the back door to look for tracks. I must find him. There are no tracks leading away from here. The masked man walked across the street in the moonlight toward the Creston's cabin. Suddenly, there was a flash from one of the hotel windows as a shot rang out. <laughs> When the Lone Ranger opened his eyes, he realized someone had just knelt beside him. Mister, do you hear me? Are you hurt badly? Hell, Mrs. Creston, I, I'm all right. A bullet grazed my temple, I think. Yes, I remember hearing a shot. We heard it, too. Hal was feeling better, and we both ran out just a few minutes ago and found you. Oh, thank heaven you're all right. Tonto's gone. I must find him. Oh, awful. I don't understand all this. I think I do. It may be something that affects many people here in the West. Al, are you able to get around? Yes, I'm all right now. I hope to find footprints near the well where you were struck down. I'll wait at the cabin. Yes, wait. With the doors locked. Let's go, Hal. In the tunnel of the mine, Bart Lackey and the other two crooks sat in the glow of a lantern talking. Toto lay tied hand and foot on the ground nearby. <laughs> well, I reckon we aren't going to be bothered much longer. By morning, those two tender feet will highball it out of here and never come back. Why don't we plug them, too? Folks know they came up here. But no one knows about the mask hombre and the Indian being here. If the Crestons go back talking about them and about mysterious doings, folks will just think they went loco in a ghost town. What was that? Uh, stop getting nervous, will you? You're almost as bad as a Creston's. It's an owl outside. Toto had heard the same sound, but he knew it was the Lone Ranger's signal to him. Though he didn't dare answer, he felt an inward relief that his masked friend was all right. The Indian realized the best chance the Lone Ranger would have against the three crooks was in the open. He spoke to Bart. Me not think you tell truth. About Lone Ranger. His body's over by the cabin. You heard the shot. Ah. Uh, feller and woman hear shot, too. Them fine body. You not smart. Maybe them go quick to stop and tell Sheriff. Him bring plenty men. Learn truth about ghost town. Hey, Bart, we didn't think of that. Yeah, we'll go make sure they don't leave. In fact, we'll take the Indian with us. And then take the three of them away from town and plug them. <laughs> Outside the main mine entrance, the Lone Ranger and Hal stood on either side, out of sight. They'd heard what was said, and the masked man knew what was in Tonto's mind. They'll be coming soon. Be ready, Hal. I'm ready. Here they come. With Tonto walking ahead of them, the three crooks came out the main entrance of the mine. The Lone Ranger and Hal suddenly stepped in behind them with drawn guns. Stop your guns and reach! The three gunmen were startled by the unexpected voice of the Lone Ranger. Hey, the masked man, the Crescent! Bart Lackey, determined to fight his way clear, spoke. Use your guns. I'll plug the masked man. Hold it. At the same time, Jake and Joe swung around with their guns. Hal Creston brought his gun butt down on Joe's head. This will hold you, you crook. The crook Jake had sprung aside and turned to fire at the Lone Ranger. I'll kill you this time, mister. Quiet. Oh. We got them all. Cover them, Hal. I'll cut Tunnel's ropes. There. I heard 
heard shooting, Hal. Are you all right? Yes, Ruth, we've caught them. Who are they? Why have they tried oh, to... Oh, me find out plenty. Them fine new gold vein in mine. It run through Ridge. Them cover it up so no one know. People think there's no gold here. Give up claims. Leave. I suspected something like that. Ah. That fella, once mine foreman. Him talk to lawyer fella. Him knew about Creston's. Him see him get off stage. How did they get you into the mine, Dotto? Them not use main entrance here. Them think maybe someone see him take out gold. Them dig secret passage from cellar hotel into mine. I thought there must be a secret passage from the hotel. I searched the cellar and found only several large empty packing boxes there. Ah. One box against wall have handle on back. Their passage behind box. Then use it to get through to mine. Then plan to take over all deserted claims on Ridge, along with Big Mine. We'll notify the claims office in Stockton to get in touch with the former owners. Before long, this town will boom again. Oh, it's wonderful. You've done a service to all the settlers by clearing up this mystery. It's possible now for them to come back here and make a good living. Ah, it not be ghost town anymore. And now me help fix wounded men. While Hal kept them covered, the Lone Ranger and Tonto attended to the wounded crooks. Joe, who had been knocked out, had finally risen to his feet. At last, they stood with their hands tied as the Lone Ranger said, Since you own the mine, Hal, you'll be rich now. We have you and Tonto to thank for that. I'm glad everything turned out all right. I'll take these crooks to Stockton, Tonto. You stay here until I return. Uh Ah. I'll see you both again. Adios and good luck. Goodbye, Goodbye. sir. Adios. Come along, you men. Gosh, what a man he is. He's wonderful. And so is Toronto. Oh, well, me just help mass friend. Him heap plenty fine man. Him plenty loyal to friends. To country. I've never learned who he is. Please tell me. Him lone ranger. Ah, the good old days, back when people were old-fashioned and the things your grandmother used to bake were fresh and piping hot. Well, at the Marita Bakeries, things haven't changed much over the years. Like Marita, old-fashioned, enriched white bread. There's a seal on every loaf that says, Marita guarantees freshness and is sold fresh through day shown on the twist tie. Maintain freshness by storing at room temperature. And when Marita says old-fashioned, it means it's made from a rich, old-fashioned recipe. And that means it's fresh. The idea of fresh anything, especially fresh bread, has been around for a long time. But folks forget what really old-fashioned freshness tastes like. That's why there's Marita. Marita enriched white bread. It has a freshness and taste that hasn't been around for a long time. That's a fresh idea that's very old-fashioned. Listen to the Lone Ranger. It was after midnight when the Lone Ranger and Tonto made their way from the woods above Floyd Gilby's ranch house to the rear of that structure. They could see a light in the window of a front room, but the rooms behind were all in darkness. The Lone Ranger spoke low to Tonto as he prepared to let himself in a rear window. Keep watch here. I'll not stay inside long. (laughs) The Lone Ranger tiptoed across the floor and stood with his ear to the door through which he could hear the voice of Floyd Gilby speaking to another man. Inside, the other man, Eddie Heaton, listened. Yes, Eddie, everything's perfect. The sheriff will be busy all morning on a personal matter somewhere. You and the gang will be able to pull off the job without interference. Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. 
your announcer, Fred Foy.